The people of Israel are about to embark on an incredible God adventure into the promised land. But their leader, Moses, will not be going with them. He knows he's going to die in the near future. This is Moses' farewell speech. This is his last opportunity that he has to speak truth and wisdom to this people that he has led through the wilderness for 40 years. If your time was near the end, what would you say to those you love? What would you want them to remember? How would you challenge them to live? The Israelites may have remembered their time in the wilderness and why they didn't enter in to the promised land the first time because of their lack of faith. They may have been anxious about the future. Moses calls them to focus on today, the day before them. He lays out their choices, life or death, blessings or curse. I can almost imagine the urgency in his voice as he challenges them, choose life. None of us know the amount of time we have left to live on earth. However, we can choose how we will live the one life we've been given to live. Let us pray. Lord, many of us may be living in disappointment of this past year or even the last few days with the events happening in our capital. We may be fearful and anxious of the coming year. Help us to stop and just focus on today. Today, we have the opportunity to choose life, the very life that Christ Jesus was born into this earth to bring us. Help us to understand that our life isn't measured in days and hours, but in our relationship with you. You are our life, and we give you thanks for this precious gift. Amen. So what was the rest of that story? Did the Israelites choose God's way or their way? Sadly, we know that the people of Israel chose their own path time and time again, and they suffered the consequences of their choices. The book of Deuteronomy is addressed to people who have returned from being exiled. This audience would have heard Moses' words with regret and sadness as their ancestors refused to choose God's ways and they had suffered the consequences of their rebellion. As they reflected on the words of Moses, maybe this time they would choose life. I think it is why when we begin a new year, we try to make all these resolutions, these choices that we do this or do that better, eat better, worry less, spend our money wiser. We may sincerely try, but many of us know how hard it is to stick with those choices we know are good for us. We want to choose life, but we are so easily distracted or tempted to settle for lesser things. We may not really know how to choose life, the life we really need. What does it mean to choose life? Well, Moses breaks it down for us. Love God, obey God, hold fast to God. This isn't difficult. Moses says, surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in the heaven that you should say who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth, in your heart, for you to observe. It's near. Three things. I want to talk about those three things. Love God. When you really love someone, you want to bring them joy. You spend time with them. You listen to them. This is the relationship God wants for us. Be intentional about loving God. Make time and make that relationship with God a priority. Why? Because God unconditionally loves you. Get to know God and love God with your words and your actions. And then obey God. Those commandments that we have are good for us, and they come out of God's love for us. Take time to read the Bible. Do what it says. Try God's way. It works. And if your life is a mess, evaluate it. How's your way working for you? 
Maybe it's time to follow Christ and try obedience. So you feel the prompting of God's Spirit to forgive or to pray for someone or to serve? Do it. And when God calls you to love the unlovely or pray for your enemies, love and pray. And then finally, hold fast. When you're drowning in your circumstances in disappointment and discouragement, hold fast to God. Because when you do, you will realize that God has been holding fast to you. Hold fast in prayer. Hold fast in trusting. Hold fast in gratitude. Hold fast in worship. Hold fast in caring. Hold fast in encouragement. Hold fast today. It says in Hebrews that today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. Whenever God's word is read, it is again that today in which each of us must decide how we will respond. The choice is clear. It is yes or no. The options presented do not include maybe, or I'll have to think about it, or I'll get around to it. You don't get credit for how your parents chose to live their lives. Instead, God is looking at your heart. How are you going to live and who are you going to live for? Are you going to follow the Lord or are you going to follow yourself? You may say, you don't know my life. It is too messed up. And God says, today you can repent and turn away from the mess and choose life. Moses was speaking to a community of people. God is speaking to us, all of us today, Brook Hill Church. What will we choose this year in 2021? God calls us to choose life, to love God, to obey God, and to hold fast to God. Even in a pandemic, even when our government is in turmoil, even when those we love are suffering, and we can't go back to the way it was, what will we choose Choose life. We can know those who persevere that they will see the goodness of God. God planted this church in a place where hundreds of homes are moving in. People are moving in. And we have a vision to be that church to impact our community with God's great love, even today. But Pastor Dana, what can we do? Look at all we can't do. Well, I'm going to give you a challenge today. Don't focus on what you can't, but on your mighty God who is able to do more than we can ask or imagine. We don't need a new vision for 2021. We just need to embrace the vision of God in new ways. In fact, the vision of God's already been revealed in this book. Have you read it? See, I was praying for God. Show me, God, what is your direction for Brook Hill Church? And after I finished praying, I decided to open this gift that I had received and I received the gift of a Bible from Neil and Janet Arsenault. They're members of our church. Now, I have lots of Bibles. This is an English Revised Standard Reader's Version. But it suddenly hit me. Oh, that's God's answer to my prayer. I just prayed for God to show me God's vision. And then God places the Bible in my hands and says, read it. Neil reminded me that the Bible is a good read. And even though it lags a little bit at the end of Genesis, keep reading because this book finishes strong. So opening up the Bible, I was reminded that God's vision has been revealed in the one who has said the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And in this book the, is the one that says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you want to know God's vision for this church, it's found in Christ Jesus. We believe that God's vision is for us to be a biblical community of many generations and cultures who seek to know and love one another as Jesus knows and loves us. This isn't something new that the vision team thought up. This is God's way. And we are recommitting with a renewed passion to this mission of God. That together with Jesus, we are making fully devoted followers of Christ. Through worship and fellowship, discipleship, ministry, and evangelism. And we are intentionally choosing to live God's way. This is our purpose, to be disciples 
who make disciples, who live and love like Jesus. This is what life is really about. Choose life. Choose God. I am praying into the dream God has for us. I believe God is preparing us for a spiritual awakening. And the focus of our church in this year will be connecting and welcoming those who are outside our church and deepening the faith of our church through Bible study and spiritual practices that will connect us deeply to God. I believe that God wants to develop an intercultural community with our Shalom Hispanic ministry and strengthen our ministry with Downtown Christian Fellowship. I believe God wants to connect families with children and youth as well as ministry to adults. If we choose life individually and corporately, we will thrive and the gates of hell and this pandemic will not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. Recently, I made three visits to people who understood what choosing life is about. I shared with Jan Sturdivant, 98 years of life, rich in love and faith, with a lifetime of investing in the lives of others. Then I visited Elizabeth Fletcher, a retired special ed teacher who invested in the lives of her students. And it was, I was so honored to pray with her a few hours before she made her heavenly homecoming. And then there's Pastor Gary. I love this picture of Gary. Holding up a joy sign is part of a bank of love letters that Abigail's granddaughter made for him. The joy of the Lord is Gary's strength. Gary's living life to the full as long as he has breath. Loving God, obeying God, and holding fast to God. God who is his life and the extent of his days. See, Gary has his mind on things above, as Paul writes in Colossians, the fourth chapter. So if you've been raised with Christ, seek things that are above, where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then also you will be revealed with him in glory. Do you hear what this says? For you died, your way of living has ended, but your life is now hidden with Christ. You're doing things God's way. That's real life. We don't know how long any of us have to live here on earth, but we can choose how we will live the one life we've been given. Choose life. You know how. You know who is your life. Every single day of your lives, we get a new set of 24 hours to be the people that God calls us to be. The people who are kind, generous, thankful, and fully devoted to following Jesus all year long, just one intentional day at a time. We stand at the edge of this new year. These 365 days in front of us. And instead of letting them blow by us, we look each of them in the eye. And one by one. We live them with intention. 365 days of sheer purpose. Each lived like it's the only day we've got. What if I live every day like no other day is owed to me? I'd reach out to my dad, make things right before it's too late. On my sister's birthday this year, I'd call instead of text. I would wake up in the morning and I would ask God what He wants me to do. I'd take those vacation days I still haven't used. Instead of inviting her to coffee, I'd invite her to church. Make myself get up early so I can watch cartoons with my kids. I'd give myself a break. I would take her to that park she's been wanting to go to, the one that's all the way across town. I'd say I love you, and I'd say it every day. On Thanksgiving, my table would be open to the whole neighborhood. Mother's Day would mean more than a $5 card. I'd let God have all the stuff weighing me down. I'd have more courage, because I'd have nothing to lose. I would take Jesus seriously when he asked us to feed the hungry. Serve the very least of these. Look after the sick. I'd be quicker to forgive because he forgave me. Living every moment with intention. Taking every purpose by the horns. Leaving nothing unsaid. Leaving nobody behind. Making every minute count. I would use every hour I had on this earth. To love God. To love others. One intentional day at a time.
So let us pray. Lord, today, today someone is listening and someone needs to say yes to your offer of life. Give them the courage to tell you that today. Someone needs to recommit to following you again as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Empower them through your Holy Spirit, Lord. And then, Lord, someone needs to be reminded that together we can still be the church and lead them to renew their commitment to this church, maybe to even being obedient to joining this church as a member or being obedient to baptism. Give us the courage to choose your way, to choose life, one intentional day at a time. Amen. So now I want to challenge you today to pick at least one intentional act of obedience and follow through this week. Here are some ideas. Pray for your neighbors. Call and check on those who are lonely. Offer to lead a Zoom Bible study. Offer your gifts of technology or computer skills to help someone to connect to worship. Write the note or the card to someone discouraged. Send in your church offering. Read your Bible. These are easy choices. I challenge you to be intentional. Write your intentional act of obedience on your calendar or write them on post-it notes and put them on your refrigerator or set up alerts in your phone to remind you to make at least one intentional choice for life every day. I want to know what you did, either by email or text or a phone call. I'm praying for you as you choose life as a disciple of Christ. Amen and amen. Well, that was our challenge for this week, but coming next week, we have a new challenge. Pay attention. 